Now, one of the great ways, and we did touch on this right at the beginning of the course, to make people sell, buy is product comparisons. People love them. They love not only reviews, but they like to see product comparisons made. They like to know that they've made the right decision. You know, they, they may have already in their mind sort of said, well, I really want this model. But by going to read a product comparison, they can justify that decision. Plus, they can then go to people that own the other models and say, ha ha, mine's better than yours. You know, and oh, sometimes as well, what you'll find is product comparisons. People will view them and go, well, I didn't realize this other model was better. I'm going to buy that one instead. And you can quite often get them to upgrade to a higher uh, value. One of my favorite things with comparisons is I will review, say I'm, I'm doing a review of cameras. I'll compare five similar cameras, but there'll be a variance in price range and features from say sort of six, seven hundred dollars up to sort of maybe even as high as fifteen hundred dollars. And what you'll find is you'll get quite a few people buying the higher value ones because they look at the features and go, well, I, I, I need all those, obviously. They don't. But they're justifying it in their minds and they want the best. People like to think they've got the best and made the right decision. So quite often if they come in on the sort of $800 camera, you can get them to buy a more expensive one because they will look at it and think, well, yeah, okay, and justify to themselves why they need it. So usually you can pay a minimum of two. I wouldn't go much above sort of maybe four or five products. Otherwise it gets a bit messy. It's a bit untidy and there's too many for you to compare. Now there can be comp competing products, so you know it could be say your Canon camera, your Fuji, your Nikon, etc., etc. Or it may be just different prices. It may be um, four Cameron Canon cameras ranging from six hundred to twelve hundred dollars, for example. So it's up to you. It depends upon the niche. There is no hard and fast answer. It depends on the niche. You may do both. You may do a comparison on competing products, or you may do one on different prices, or you may do both. It's entirely up to you. But it is a very, very effective method of selling. It really is. It's a great way to make sales. And it's a great way to sell a, a more expensive model than you thought you were going to sell. So I strongly recommend using them if you can. So you do appeal to a much wider range of people. You get, as I said, you get people coming in and saying, well, I want that model regardless. And they use the comparison to justify it. But then you get the other people coming in on the particular model and go well no I want the best and they'll buy the more expensive one so you know you have a real wide appeal and you can find the comparisons can often increase your sales so where you can it's worth using one you may want to spread it over you know four or five pages for example it may not be just a single page it may be two or three pages or whatever it depends upon your your style I mean one thing that you could do is you can you write say four or five pages for your product comparison and on each page you're comparing a different feature so you know you may um, compare your color depth on the camera you zoom your features and so on one thing you can do as well to add a bit of value is you can do a comparison table where you compare the features so you may say it's got four buttons this model's got four buttons this has got three this has got seven things like that and that can work very well people do enjoy that it helps them to very very easily visually compare the different products which can be very very helpful indeed but if you're going to use a table make sure it displays properly and fits into your uh, site quite often you'll find you if you're using wordpress you may create a table but it doesn't fit into your middle column so you're going to have to mess around to make it fit and look good but if you do that it's going to help you an awful lot so how do you do a product comparison well you want to pick two to five similar products in the niche now these could be by the same manufacturer they could be by different people it's up to you okay it's entirely up to you what you pick it depends upon the niche the market the product what people are buying what people are looking for etc etc um, then you can write a review of each one or you can write a review of the features comparing the features of each one then compare the features the price the reliability etc um, etc et so look at the model the um, what's on each one and then decide um, decide how you're going to compare them and that's really really going to solve the problem for you so compare the different features 
uh, the prices. Yeah, just look through each one. Um, if you go onto Amazon, every product has a um, has a product features and specifications usually. And what you can do is you can take that and use that as a basis for your comparison. Now it's up to you whether you use ones from the same manufacturer but with different price points. It depends. If you've done some keyword research, you may well have found that well actually people are looking for um, are interested in say you know the different Canon models, but you may find that there's a lot of searches comparing say a Canon with a, a Nikon camera. In which case maybe you want to compare the two. It, there is no hard and fast rule and that's the, one of the difficult things about this is there isn't a hard and fast rule and it does depend upon uh, the niche and you have to make a judgment call on what you feel is best. Um, so it could be competing products at the same price point. I said it, it really really does depend but one thing that I said works very very well is to have the different price points. The different price points tends to, to work very well because people come in and you get the people that don't spend a lot of money they'll go for the lower end other people want the best regardless they'll buy the cheap the more expensive one and then some other people will buy the one in the middle so that often works very very well um, not just with Amazon but pretty much with anything yeah you know, anything you want to pick you can use um, use this for it's very very effective it really is so yeah you know, I think product comparisons are very very good I tend to use them on my sites you know I'd review the product uh, for example the front page would be the product review then I may say well what I'm gonna do is I will have um, let's see I'll have a page where I compare three similar similar products or I may have another page where I compare different models and whatever so you know, you've you've got to make a judgment call based on your gut feeling and what you see in the niche. And once you do that, you'll you'll find it works very very well. If you find the comparison isn't doing well, then maybe you need to rewrite it. Maybe you need to change it for a different type of comparison. It really really does depend 100% on the niche. But product comparisons will help increase your conversion rate and your sales.